Good evening, Hunslet and uh, Riverside Ward. Uh, thank you for everyone that is tuning into today's live feed and uh, just uh, welcome to everyone that will be viewing the live feed at a later date. Uh, as you can probably see, I'm trying to be, be a, a little bit more fancy now and use a, uh, some new technology to uh, dual stream it to both Facebook and Twitter at the same time and just make it a bit more of a, a viewing experience for people. But just a quick run through of what the planned agenda of this meet uh, live cast is as normal. Uh, I'm going to go through some uh, local ward updates just so that you're aware of what's going on in the city. Uh, then what we'll do is we'll jump into in about five minutes time to your live questions. Uh, so please start sending those in. So uh, without further ado, I'll start going through some of those updates and then we'll uh, start uh, taking your questions. So in terms of where we are sitting in terms of our coronavirus response uh, we are still very much obviously in the middle of the pandemic and are dealing with it as such uh, Leeds city centre reopened uh, a lot more of its non uh, essential retail uh, last week or so start this week should I say uh, and it's it's gone reasonably well the footfall's gone up from about 10% to about just under 50% of what we would normally get so that's a a uh, pretty good uplift. Uh, what we're really saying to residents is obviously still be really, really cautious. So we are still saying keep two metres apart when you're in public spaces, make sure you are respecting that distance between people. Uh, all the evidence shows that once you start getting under that two metres, your chance of picking up the virus if someone does have the virus uh, does increase quite substantially. Uh, do take advantage of all the additional washing stations where you're out and about. All the major businesses uh, have been told that if they're retail, they need to have hand sanitizer stations there. There are ones strategically placed around the city as well, so please do utilise that. If you are going into the city, you know, continue to avoid public transport where you can. Capacity is obviously greatly reduced on public transport, but it's still there to be used. And if you can't avoid public transport, and please wear a face covering uh, if you can. Again, this is just to minimise the risk of the, the virus uh, being spread. Um, we are still providing quite a lot of emergency assistance as a council. Uh, Hunslet and Riverside Ward is generally in the top three of areas that need assistance. Uh, and all I can really do is pay absolute credit to the third sector here in South Police who have absolutely worked an amazing uh, operation. Uh, and sometimes cross ward to support each other. Um, we're still getting a lot of referrals coming through and probably will for the foreseeable future. And I think absolute credit to the, to the third sector, and particularly to our hub here in Hunslet and Riverside Wall, which is involved, which you have done an absolutely amazing and fantastic job. Just a quick update on some uh, uh, police and crime related matters. Um, crime has been relatively low during the lockdown, as you can imagine, for a lot of reasons. More people have been home. Uh, we are still seeing quite a lot of um, burglary, parcel burglaries uh, in city centre blocks. Uh, we are starting to see other crimes across the city start to uh, pick up as well. And particularly as we get into the warmer, uh, months of the year the big message from the police is that kind of like common sense approach of make sure you've got your uh, doors uh, locked windows locked etc particularly on the warmer nights but we are starting to see if you will more normal crime start to rear its head again as we get back to a kind of more kind of normal situation uh, domestic violence is still a big issue the police are dealing with and there's a lot of uh, assistance and support going into that uh, two really uh, important licensing applications in the ward. Um, there has been an approach from uh, Winston's on Dewsbury Road to have uh, an alcohol and uh, late night entertainment license that came through today. Uh, I will be reading that very closely and making comments appropriately. And another big one, uh, which is quite important for Riverside residents, is the redevelopment of the old casino at Leeds Dock, which will become a, a department, which will be a mixed use development. Uh, that has, again, just come through today and I'll be reading through those. There are links on my website uh, and my Facebook and Twitter to those applications. So please do uh, get in contact and obviously uh, make your views heard. Uh, one big project in the world that's uh, hopefully going to be finalised, or should I say the initial plans finalised in the next couple of days to a week, is uh, the low traffic neighbourhood pilot on Beeston Hill and in uh, the Beeston part of Beeston and Holbeck Ward. 
these are designed to try and promote um, cycling and walking to the city centre and actually cross community. Uh, there's a lot of work going into it. It will also be a great opportunity to get potentially additional uh, planting and biodiversity into some of more of our terrace communities. Uh, expect to hear a lot more about this in the coming weeks as we start to work out what it would look like, how it would impact traffic, what public opinions would be. But the potential for Beeston Hill uh, as a pilot area is that actually we get a lot of additional greenery in. We cut speeds on those big through roads where we know there's a lot of traffic uh, issues and potential accidents. And we, we try and improve the overall environment and health for the area. And then the final kind of update I'm going to give, and then we'll, we'll start taking your uh, questions and concerns, et cetera. So please do start sending those comments in as we go through, is on Leeds City Council's budget position. And I have to be completely honest with you, the situation is dire. Um, we have spent uh, up to... Oh, the cost of COVID in Leeds has been roughly about £197 million. That is about 40% of the council's revenue budget. Uh, the revenue budget is the people and services type stuff we do. We've got some money back from the government, uh, about £43 million. Uh, there's still a big gap. There's still a lot of unknown costs. And the honest answer is we're in a position where the government at the moment is not promising to reimburse that money. They asked us to go out and protect the citizens of Leeds, to do all the right things to support people who can pay their rent, their council tax, who uh, needed assistance, and we have been left wanting. And the reason why I bring this up now is we are very close to a position where something called a 114 notice may be issued. And this is basically where the council says it cannot do its legal duty of balancing its budget in the year and if that happens services get cut and they just don't get cut lightly they get cut to core services only things we are legally obliged to give the repercussions for this city are ginormous there is no point in pretending this is nice there's no point in pretending there's an interesting way around this if we get to this position Lead City Council will have to start looking at closing services to balance our budget legally. So we are in a very difficult position. I think we as elected members have to be honest to you as the public. I have to be honest to you as your councillor that we're in this position because we've done the right thing that the government has asked us to do. And I just hope the government listens because it's not just Leeds, it's every single council in the entire of the united kingdom is in this position and we could be looking at the collapse of local government on a national level so the stakes are high and the stakes to your services are frankly ginormous and i think we need to be honest about that you're going to hear a lot of this over the coming weeks and months there may need to be an emergency council budget to try and do some of these things we're looking at having to consult on redundancies and a whole variety of other things it is not a great situation, and I don't think there's any point in ending that it is. So, uh, moving from that little bit of doom and gloom, uh, I'm going to move on to obviously the open Q and uh, question and section, which is why we're here today, which is for you to ask me your questions and for me to try and answer them. So, let's have a look. Uh, let's have a look at the questions we've got. Hello, everybody. So um, let's have a look. Uh, space apart needs to be adjusted to one metre. Um, Brian, yeah, the government is looking at this at the moment. Most of the research that's come from the government has been very much along the lines of, and this is from scientists, that when you're within one metre of somebody and they have the virus, the chances of you picking it up are very, very high about a minute's worth of exposure is potentially enough to get the virus. When it's at two metres, that takes up to uh, 15 minutes. Now, from an industry point of view, particularly for the manufacturing industry, two metres, uh, sorry, one metre is really important because they can get their production lines on the go. Um, and there is a lot of debate about actually, are we having community infections now? Or are we having site-based infections? So, particular infections in factories or a particular nursing home. So 
the research, the scientists, and there's never one science. There's 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 a lot of conflicting opinions at the moment. Uh, the scientists have been quite clearly saying further apart is better, but there is an economic imperative, I think, from the government to try and get that distance down. We'll we'll see over the coming days and weeks what they decide. Uh, again, Ryan, in terms of your question, uh, wearing a face mask on, pu on public transport is now compulsory. Uh, there are exceptions for people that have medical conditions uh, where they can't wear a mask because it may affect their breathing or it may cause anxiety, etc. Um, but for everyone else, it is absolutely compulsory. The infection rate is, is much, much lower. So what masks do is they don't protect you. They protect others from you, if that makes sense. So essentially, it can cut down uh, the transfer rates by some scientists say up to 90%. Now, if we're all doing that, then that obviously makes a lot of sense. And actually, uh, we should do that. And a lot of people were talking about having to do this for absolutely ages. And, you know, common sense prevailed and the government did make it compulsory. Um, Darren, Consulate Mill. Um, I haven't uh, heard about the application uh, result yet. Uh, for those that don't know it, there is a, at the Huntsman Mill development on Leeds Riverside, there is a shopping unit uh, that the developer wants to turn into seven flats. I've objected, as have quite a lot of residents. Uh, I am just waiting for final confirmation from officers. I think the Environment Agency also objected on flooding grounds. Uh, I've not heard the final decision yet on that. Uh, officers are still making a decision. But as soon as I know, Darren, residents at H2010 will know as well. Uh, Brian, uh, I mean, this is an interesting one with the HS2 scheme. Uh, it's obviously a, a multi-decade scheme. Um, I don't know what they will do to them. We are going to have a very severe recession. The economy dipped by 20% in April. Now, the big question for government is, and actually for Leeds as a city as well, is actually, is that recession a very sharp V-shaped recession? So we go down really badly, but we actually recover very, very quickly. Or actually because the virus and the way everything's worked is actually fundamentally changing our economy and how we do things. Is that recession drawn out as, for example, businesses make people redundant because actually they can do a lot more online because some of that cultural barrier has been broken and, and a variety of other things so i think you know big infrastructure projects like that it will be interesting to see if the government decides to shelve them in order to try and pay some of the other costs of the virus but i think a lot is going to be completely on the basis of how quick that recession is and how quickly we recover. Is it a V-shaped recession or is it more like the financial crash recession of 2008 where it just went on for a decade? Um, what are we doing to fight these cutbacks? Um, there's, there's two points. There's a political question. And there's actually a practical question about all well, I'll, and I'll because this is obviously a a councillor rather than a party political broadcast. I, I'll, I'll stick to the, the council bit. From the council's position, we are legally required to set uh, a balanced in-year budget. If we don't, we break the law. Uh, we are legally liable as councillors. It's a criminal offence. Uh, and the government can send in commissioners to basically take control of the council. What um we can do and what we are doing is talking about ways of managing that so for example um our finance teams and uh, the uh, executive member for resources uh, council lewis are talking to the government about capitalizing the debt uh, the costs and what that kind of means is is instead of us having to balance it in year uh, we basically turn it into a debt and then we spread it out over 20 30 40 50 years uh, because actually this is a one-off hit that's going to hit the council really hard. And actually as the economy recovers, the fundamentals will lead to quite strong. This is all coronavirus related costs. One of the other things we're looking at is our assets. So again, we're looking at how we operate. Uh, can we have more staff work remotely at home? Does that mean we need less buildings? Do we need to look at fees and rates? Um, 
a whole variety of things. Are there other things in our arsenal that we can use to generate revenue which doesn't impact residents or un uh, unnecessarily increase council tax too much? I think on a political front, actually, this is not just a Labour thing. Um, on the national front, every council in the UK is in really dire straits with this. Every council in the UK desperately, desperately needs the government to change its mind on this. They've given £4 billion so far. What is needed is approximately £10 billion to see the councils in the UK get through this. And it doesn't look like they're going to do that at the moment. So I think whether you're a red council, a blue council, a yellow council, an orange council, uh, a council with no over control, every local authority in the country is now desperately pleading with the government to just use common sense because if start shutting services just to our core services, it actually just increased costs because a lot of the preventative services we do stop and we become a reactive rather than a proactive organisation. Uh, Jim, uh, there are lots of tree planting, winding paths in uh, Trentham's and some areas across flats, but there are a couple of uh, year trees being uprooted and broken. Um, what I can do, Jim, is uh, we are looking at uh, widening in paths uh, because of the coronavirus. We're looking at um, our active travel system. There are plans uh, for Dewsbury Road and for uh, Ellen Road and Beeston Road, uh, which obviously surround that particular part of the ward. Uh, I'm in conversations about things like the low traffic neighbourhood at the moment on Beeston Hill. So we'll pick those up. In terms of those specific tree related issues, if you could possibly directly message me where the tree issues are, I could pick those up separately with forestry. Um, right, um, that is a police related uh, question uh, and safeguarding. We have a very dedicated safeguarding uh, team based in here in Leeds and with West Yorkshire Police. Um, I literally put a blog post on to my council uh, update literally yesterday uh, with all the safeguarding numbers. So if you believe there are any safeguarding issues, then please raise them with West Yorkshire Police and with Lee City Safeguarding's teams. Uh, any intelligence the police get, they do investigate, but it is a police matter. So I would refer you to West Yorkshire Police on that one. Um, in terms of the Bellar Slip Road, uh, they're doing the noise barrier at the moment, Darren. So it will really depend on how... Uh, quickly that work takes. We are getting regular updates. Uh, I'm more than happy to get a, a proper date up from them uh, on Monday and get that sent out to uh, residents around the Parnabies, uh, the bits of the Westbury's, etc., that are impacted. Okay, let's have a look. Um, let's have a look. Oh, this is a long question. Uh, da -da -da -da. Yeah, I think this is an interesting point, actually, Sandra, about actually um, doing this. We are finding compliance is 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 being relatively. Uh, I'm going to put that down because it's quite a big, long, weird uh, question. People probably can't see me. In terms of mass compliance on buses, we and and public transport, we are finding most people are sticking to the rules. Uh, there is some compliance issues, and there are some uh, specific issues where you know bus drivers are making judgments um again it's it's legislation uh as legislation is it is compulsory and you know where there are people not following it or bus operators not doing it there are potentially sanctions so it is in their interest but if you are finding that maybe a particular driver isn't enforcing it or etc uh, then you can contact me and I will refer it on to the relevant bus operator. Each bus obviously has a, uh, a unique number and then we can find out what time. But very much it is uh, really, really important. Uh, um, yeah. 
don't think I could have put it better myself, Brian. I, I do think central government has got us by the uh, proverbials, as it were, and I'm, I'm glad you used that expression rather than another one because I would get told off for doing that on the live feed. So thank you for that. Uh, we no, we are in a difficult position. Um, look, I became a councillor in the middle of austerity. I've been very successful with working with colleagues of getting millions of pounds spent in this ward even during that period because I think the development in the lead city centre part of this ward those that money needs to be right redirected to support uh the redevelopment of good infrastructure and the preservation of historical infrastructure uh in our ward uh, both on Beaton Hill and in Hunslet uh that is still going to be my long-term kind of mission with Council National Iqbal to keep that going but yeah absolutely I think you know <sighs> The economy will rebound in Leeds and we will be in a position where actually a lot starts again. But you may have a year or two years where everything stops because we have to balance our budget legally unless the government you know, does something. So, yeah, I am. I'm worried. And, and, and I think, you know, they have by the proverbials is a, probably a, a good way of putting it. Um, Let's have a look. Uh, yeah, Jim, send us that email later. That will be fine. Right, Sandra. Um, that is, is a very specific question. If you just want to send me a direct message, I will pick up with you separately off the live feed. Is that okay? Uh, let's have a look. Uh, Yorkshire pudding's thoughts. I like a Yorkshire pudding. Uh, I... I I'm trying to lower my carbon footprint, so I, I'm, I'm pretty much vegan now. Uh, trying to get a decent vegan Yorkshire pudding is very, very hard. Uh, I'm not technically purely vegan, so I can cheat and get a normal Yorkshire pudding. Uh, but, you know, Yorkshire pudding with gravy and some nice vegan sausages uh, is is definitely comfort food I like. So I'm, a, I'm definitely a Yorkshire pudding man. Um, right. No problem, Jim. Thank you for joining us. Okay. So we're... You know, still got another 20 minutes, people. Has anyone got any more questions? Or I can start doing some other updates from the world that I know of. It's completely your choice. But any other questions or comments? Or anything, you know, you're concerned about it. That about said, you want to, what do you think to our budget position? Um, what do you think we should be doing in terms of making the city safer? You know, this is your time to ask me, so... Do you like the new format, by the way? You know, some feedback on that might be nice. Do you like the fact that I can show you questions that is a bit prettier, as it were? So please do let me know, because at the moment you're all being very, very quiet and not asking me anything. Uh, have a look. Uh, okay, I've got a WhatsApp question here. Um, the one thing I can't integrate into this, so I still have to look at other things. Um, Someone's just texted me to say, uh, say as well they enjoyed me talking about Yorkshire puddings. Um, Yorkshire puddings are good. Anyway, so this uh, WhatsApp question, uh, parking enforcement. So a uh, couple of things on this. From the 4th of July, um, we are reinstigating charges for Leeds City Council car parking sites. Uh, they will be at a discounted level. Uh, information is on my Facebook page. Uh, I shared a link from the council's Facebook page earlier. I will be doing a proper post about it. So just be aware that parking charges for Leeds City Council parking bays and um, car parks is uh, coming on its way back. In terms of parking enforcement, a lot of our civil enforcement officers have been directed to other tasks. We've done a lot of moving stuff around in the council to try and get keep services going. Um, as we probably start getting back to normality and as parking enforcement starts coming back online, they are you will see in the city centre they've been doing it. In the outer areas like uh, Hunter and Riverside, where we've got our own dedicated civic, uh, sorry, civil enforcement officer who does parking stuff, they will be coming back online and doing their local job. But as you can probably imagine, it has been really important to try and make sure that um, staff resources have been directed to where they've been most needed. But Parking charges are coming back from the 4th of July, uh, you know, budget position, and as I've mentioned, and also uh, civic enforcement uh, work will start work happening in the ward again. Uh, let's have a look. 
Yeah, Sandra, again, I won't put that one particular one up, but I'll, I'll pick that up later. Uh, uh, let's have a look. Into your hub. Um, no, um, this is... Um, this is all a piece of software I, I, I purchased uh, called um, Steam uh, uh, Steam Yard. Is it? Uh, it's costing me money, unfortunately, but you know it does sort of improve the situation, and hopefully people are enjoying the fact the different format. I will get better at this. I only bought the software yesterday. Um, so, okay. So in terms of shielding, uh, Brent, this is a really uh, urgent topic at the moment um, and we are waiting for more guidance from central government if you go to my local news update uh, summary yesterday on my uh, Facebook page which links to my website you will see there's a section on that with a leaflet of what we're advising people a lot is obviously going to depend on the government's uh, policies we have gone today from uh, level four to level three in terms of the coronavirus alert system that will start to release some things that the government always indicated that shielded people um, would be the last to come out of the lockdown process. Now, what has been happening is they've been tinkering, as it were, with what they consider to be severely medically vulnerable. So there was kind of a broad kind of sweep of people put into shielding, uh, GPs, uh, and clinicians have now started to review this and there have been text messages going out to people uh, to basically say, we no longer think you are clinically um, severely vulnerable, therefore your shielding is going to come to an end and the additional support that you get. It's still all quite a live issue. Um, it has caused a lot of confusion, but do have a look at the the local news update I did and as I've said there's a link to a document on there about everything we're doing at the moment and as soon as we know from the government what they're planning to do with shielding then we will communicate that to the to the community uh, as I said probably via multiple social media channels and also via my um, Facebook channels etc so okay so let's just have a look uh, is any more questions coming through uh, a look. Um, not on there. Let's have a look at WhatsApp. Yeah, so another uh, WhatsApp question here. Again, unfortunately, I, I can't show it because it doesn't integrate into this software. Um, and it's around um, how to put it in front of the house word council tax arrears basically um council tax and rent arrears so the council's position throughout the pandemic has been to provide active assistance to those that need it um and to do payment deferrals uh if required uh, as temporary support so we will try and get people signed up to council tax uh, benefit etc and all that um those rents arrears and council tax arrears are still there, as it were. The council will be taking a very softly, softly approach with it because of the situation in terms of how we support people to pay those back. We are in a difficult position that to a certain extent they need to be paid back because of our budget position. Uh, and we have spent an awful lot, uh, also I should say not received a lot because of it. But we will approach those people with arrears in a really, really sensitive way we do not want to be doing anything unreasonable it's not fair this is not you've not been put into this position by anyone but yourself uh, not yourself by the situation of the, the virus um so we will be sensitive and we will be supportive um but it's it is something that we need to be aware of okay so we've got 15 minutes yet left yet has anyone got any other questions or comments uh you know everything can't be perfect in Hunslet and riverside world because my inbox says otherwise so any other questions and comments uh any worries uh anything you want to say at all while we're here because i'm always interested in hearing otherwise i'm just going to start rambling for 15 minutes because you know it's, it's a long time to hear me to talk about myself let's have a look um any email questions 
questions. A lot. Um, yeah, this is a this is come via a direct message rather than uh, via the live feed. Um, it's about the low traffic neighbourhoods again. So, what a low traffic neighbourhood is is basically the idea is that we try and incentivize people walking and cycling. Um, there has been a massive increase in walking and cycling during the pandemic, as you would imagine. Uh, but actually, there are some really big benefits from that uh it reduces adult um health issues well health issues for everyone to be fair uh, lack of mobility is a really big problem for people's health um so it helps promote active lifestyles that improves people's physical health it improves their mental health that's good for them it's also good for the city because it reduces our costs elsewhere because that all helps improve a person's overall well-being uh, it has a massive benefit in terms of air pollution so it, a lot of the journeys we make in Leeds are actually really short car journeys. So if we can eliminate some of those car journeys by actually making walking or cycling safer and as quick and actually technically cheaper because you're not using fuel, not only do uh, we get all the health benefits uh, directly from it, but we also reduce air pollution and uh, particulate damage, which is an additional health benefit. It also reduces speed. So for particular areas, particularly our terrorist communities like Beeston Hill, those speeds are really, really dangerous. We have lots of serious accidents on Beeston Hill. I get regular uh, communications of people really scared about speeding cars. There's some really long stretches of road on Beeston Hill, etc. So it is really, really important that we slow that down so we get that benefit as well. And one of the really nice benefits is because we're looking to do this initially with planters because, you know, we want to get it done sooner rather than later. There's potential for a, an environmental benefit uh, for nature. So if we start putting strategic planters in places that narrow streets are, and, and, and changes the pattern of how people move, we actually get additional green space into a lot of our really tarmacked and concreted communities um but they're planters so we can move them and the idea of the pilot is, is that we see what works we see if we have to make any amendments uh, and then actually we can move it about so actually there are different combinations of how you slow stuff down so we're going to do the planters uh, we should get the it's gone on to what's called commonplace which is the council's kind of consultation system for things like this today uh, we're going to get a much more firmer plan from council officers sometime next week and I'll obviously make sure my concerns, which are your concerns uh, as residents, as you feed them back to me, are fed back to them. And hopefully we might see in six to eight weeks this trial take place. If it works, great. If it doesn't, we have a loads of planters with loads of plants in that we can put in really nice places to make the area look nice afterwards. So in that sense, there's, there's no loss. Uh, Brenda. Um, I did not know that. Um, I go to that subway for a sandwich when I'm out and about in the world. I'm a little bit upset, actually. Um, I, 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 I don't know is, is the honest answer. I'd have to look into that. It's obviously a private commercial matter for that company. Uh, it's not something really that we would get. I find out about licensed applications and new shops. Uh, I don't necessarily get to find out about them closing down, but that is something uh, I will have a look at. So thank you for letting me know. So we've got about 11 minutes left. Uh, are there any other questions, concerns uh, that people want to raise? Uh, I'm, I'm always going to show good if, uh, positive feedback there, Adam. So thank you. And that's uh, really good coming from you. And I know, uh, as you once were literally a legend of a counsellor. Uh, that's that's quite nice feedback. So thank you for that. Not that I'm being shamelessly uh, self-promoting in any way by doing these, uh, but I try my best. Uh, any other questions? After all, this is your time to ask me whatever you want within reason. Um, so please do utilise that time. Um, otherwise, I'll just give you some more local updates if you want that instead. 
If you prefer me to give some more local updates for the next 10 minutes, if someone lets me know in the comments, I'll uh, give some more local updates. I've got lots. Um, let's have a look. Uh, another WhatsApp question. Uh, this is in relation to uh, the low road works or the A61S works. So as a lot of you will know, uh, there's a park and ride being built in Sturton. Uh, that's going to link to Leeds City Centre via a prioritisation corridor. Um, we got initial sight of the new traffic regulation orders, the rules basically of how this will work uh, last week. Uh, with where the bus lanes and the cycle lanes will be, etc. Uh, we've raised a few issues, actually nothing particularly major actually, but we have raised a few issues as councillors. It will be going out to full public consultation by the end of the month is what we've been told. So you will be getting uh, posts from me online about it. The entire idea of the, the low road, the A61S prioritisation scheme is literally, though maybe not, at the moment because of the virus it is to prioritize uh, public transport and active travel again to try and reduce those air pollution issues uh, to try and actually get more capacity onto those roads via high capacity travel systems such as buses um, but there's a lot of information coming out about that at the end of the month so i'll probably leave that one for the moment um have a look um yeah, in terms of the bridge house building on barn road i have found out about this and i'm actually a little bit annoyed if i'm honest so it is being converted into flats and it's been converted into flats under something called permitted development so permitted development are certain types of planning rules where the government says um basically you can do it as long as you stick to the rules we don't need to consult the public uh, it'll just happen effectively. So they'll put up site notices, but the, the same kind of normal process as you would get with some planning applications didn't happen. And they have a tendency of not informing councillors when it's permitted development because it tends to be quite small things. Someone sticking up an extension on the house, stuff like that. So a permitted development application went in in April of 2019. Um, right at the time I was busy trying to get re-elected, so it probably went past me, is the honest answer. Uh, it was approved uh, with no request of comments from councillors or the public because it was permitted development, uh, and they have permission to build between 23 and 29 flats at the property. As I've said, I am a little bit frustrated at this because it's not a small matter of permitted development it's 23 to 29 flats um i am in correspondence with officers as to what they agreed i have been looking through the planning documents in fairness they they have resolved quite a few issues with the parking before they gave the permitted development decision but yes it is going forward as a conversion to flats and basically none of us were informed about it because it was permitted development so even if we did object we have no right to stop permitted development because it it's legally sanctioned by the government so unfortunately it's happening George I'm afraid uh, Brenda uh, so the it's called the DT2 money uh, town district 2 fund um, we don't know yet is the honest answer that money was ring fenced so i'm i'm relatively confident it probably will still go ahead uh, that's the intention but we are waiting on seeing what the government says i don't know how that ring fence for that particular scheme works i mean that money's been there for years and it's, it's, it's it took me one to find it and b to push it to be spent it has been allocated to projects already. Now, whether they decide, because of everything, that actually those projects go ahead, because actually it'll grow the economy locally, which will increase business rates, which is good for the council's budget, happy days. Whether they decide actually it's something that can be done later, I will need to find out from colleagues as those assessments are made. But it is 
mainly capital money. So where we're going to face the biggest budget shortfall as a council is on our revenue budget. And the best way I can describe revenue is people, people and services. Um, so that's staff, that's the library, not the library building, but the actual running of the library and stuff like that. So we're expecting if the government doesn't do the honourable right thing, that most of those cuts will be to the revenue budget. That means capital things like the Town District 2 fund potentially will be safe. But again, I generally don't know. Everything needs to be up for discussion. Uh, and I need to find out from more senior colleagues than myself about that. Um, Simon, uh, let's have a look. So in terms of the towpath, I mean, it's hot, recently just had its uh, resurfacing with money from West Yorkshire Combined Authority and uh, in conjunction with uh, Sustrans. Um, there are a few particular issues with the towpath that we are in conversations with, with the river shoot, riverside steward we have in this ward uh, as part of the city centre management team and with Canals and Riverside Trust. Uh, we've got issues around lighting, we've got issues around um, litter, um, particularly litter bins. So we are picking that up. Uh, there are some conversations we need to have around protected trees. There's a lot of self-seeded trees on the towpath that are technically not registered to everyone, but actually have quite a lot of biodiversity. Some of them have been removed without prior notice because of them not being registered as zoned. And I am in conversations with city uh, centre management now and forestry about an emergency tree protection order to protect what's there so that we can actually assess them properly. Um, in terms of um, other bits, there are conversations about, can we have an extended taxi service on the river? Uh, and there are conversations. I know the developer at Stitchy was quite interested in that. I'm quite interested in that. The city centre management team is quite interested in that. But there are ongoing costs that we need to consider. Uh, there is also um, some conversation around rewilding parts of it, uh, particularly down in the H2010 development where we've had birds uh, come in and recover. And it's a beautiful sight to see the two, off I think we've got two um, swan families, uh, one from about Canoss Drop up to Crown Point Bridge and one from Crown Point Bridge up to the train station. We're seeing the herons return, we're seeing the otters return. So there's a conversations around uh, the rewilderness part of what we're doing there. Uh, there's a lot going on and a lot of unfortunately those conversations have stopped. One of the big things I'm eager to do and I've been speaking to the River uh, Riverside Stewardship Officer, is actually around that is actually making sure the Riverside communities have a much more prominent voice in the decisions that uh, Canals and Riverside Trusts make, uh, that we make on the bits of land we own as a council, the land owned by Allied London in terms of the things they do. So there are lots of conversations happening around that. Uh, George, look, I, I, I completely understand why you feel let down. Uh, I'm really annoyed that because it was permitted development, they didn't think it would be sensible to tell councillors. Bearing in mind, again, 23 to 29 flats is not exactly a small amount of work. Uh, it is something I fed back to planning and um, we need to address when stuff like that. You know, I don't want to know about someone's house extension. To be fair, but something when it's 23 to 29 flats, it would be nice to have been told. So I, I share your frustration about that, George. Um, yes, yeah, Simon, the towpath is really busy, and this is a this is a, a big concern uh, of mine as well, actually, because actually, as Situ uh, comes online fully and the bridge becomes open to communities from East Leeds onto the South Bank, uh, as Victoria, Victoria Riverside completes. Uh, there's going to be an awful lot more people. Uh, we are going to have to think carefully about how that is managed as a shared space. Uh, there are going to be waste issues. There are going to be safety issues. Um, and as I said, our new river stewardship officer, um, try to say that really fast, River Riverside stewardship officer, that's it, um, Richard, 
um, he knows what my feelings are on this art and, and we are going to sit down and or, or maybe via virtually have these proper conversations because we need to get it right because it's going to get busy. Right, on that, ladies and gentlemen, it is quarter past seven, so it's the end of this session. Uh, I would love you to put in the comments whether you've liked the slightly newer format with the, the graphics, with the little ticker at the bottom of my contact details. Uh, please give me feedback on uh, how I'm doing these. Do you want me to change how I'm doing them? Do you want more updates from me rather than just questions, etc.? cetera? Uh, other than that, thank you for listening. Uh, thank you to those people who re-watch this at a later date on the safe video and uh, keep safe. See you all soon.